Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Paulette, and today we're gonna to talk about IVF. Um, what it is, what to expect, and what potentially what you'll be going through. Um, I'm gonna be making this into a two-part video. This one is specifically just about um, the egg retrieval, which is the first part of IVF, and then the second video will be about the uh, frozen embryo transfer. Um, mainly because it's so long and so much information of what happened or what I went through that I don't want to make it a crazy long video. Plus, I do want to have you keep in mind that this is from my personal experience and if it's something that your doctor and um, your doctor and you have discussed that it's similar to what I'm go doing, then great. If not, and you just want to watch that's great too. I don't mind. Anyway, um, so recap to why we started to do IVF. So we went through three IUIs, which is inseminate. We went through three IUIs. Um, I don't remember what they stand for, but I'll have an educational video for most things that I can link on the bottom of the description, description box. And basically, after the third um, IUI failure, um, my doctor was like, we can't be doing this to you emotionally and physically. I think it's best to proceed to IVF. And um, the downsides of us doing IVF is that we would have to pay for it and then that we would have to um, wait for it and we had a limited amount of time to wait because my husband was going to be stationed somewhere else and we didn't really know where but um we were he we once the time got closer we found out it was going to be japan and then luckily we we're able to move that to where we are now in 29 palms which i actually really like a lot um still close to family still close to san diego somewhat um so yeah going on with ivf so first they had us on a wait list and we had to wait and then i called them and i was like around the time they told me that um our time would be up to start ivf and they're like actually yeah we we're gonna call you tomorrow but today's great let's start you um on the whole track for ivf the first thing that they had to do was a saline infusion sonogram it's a mouthful but what they do is um, do like an ultrasound of your uterus with like by penetrating you with the ultrasound thingy and um, then at the same time they put in a solution and that takes picture so they can see like in action what, if there's any scarring or any blockage in the ovaries, like the tubes, and then in your uterus, so they know like if um, if there's scarring, that might be because the embryo is having a hard time attaching. Um, so they want to make sure like your success rate of all of that and how much um, issues they're going to have um, with proceeding to going through the FET, frozen embryo transfer. So um, after that, uh, they had me start my schedule again and um, well, my schedule, my cycle. So that was like one month. The next month I had to take um, injection classes and a baseline and I had to do it within like, the injection class had to be on my baseline, which is a sonogram to check my ovaries and my cervix lining and everything. And um, uh, the, and then the injection class had to be on that baseline or a day before. So I did mine the day before, and that day before we had to pay for the IVF, which included like freezing our embryos for a whole year and doing the first transfer and taking out my um, eggs out of my ovaries, which is kind of a procedure. I'll talk more about it later. And um, I had to pay for all of that. And then the next day, and then they talked to me about all the injections I had to take, which is a lot. So the first, one of the first ones that they talked talk to me about was um, 
uh, Monopure and Gonalef and Granor Relics and Overdrill. So all four of those medications do very different things and this is just for the embryo transfer. Those are four different types of medications that you will have to take at some point. Sometimes all four in a day. So more of the story kind of so as of right now, expect a lot of injections and we'll talk about it right now. Okay, first um, they have you do um, Monopure in the morning and Gonalef at night. So morning and night. And I had a very strict schedule of when I did it. So in the morning was like um, between 8.30 and 9. I gave myself a window because nobody's perfect. I have a life. Um, and then uh, Gonalef at night and they had me taking up to 150 units of it. So they you click it, it's like a pin. And I have video of it and I'll show you it of me taking my injection injections in the morning and a really old video of me taking injections at night. doing IUI so it's pretty similar just more injections um, once um, the uh, three days after the, on the third day after you start taking injections um, they have you start taking blood tests but the blood tests have to happen before your morning injection so my monitor pure was at 8 and 8 30 to 9 I would have to be at the lab about 7 and then make my way home to take my injections. Um, <clears throat> after a while, and so why do blood tests? The blood tests take tell you tell the doctor how much progesterone and estrogen you're making in your body, so they know um, potentially how close you are to ovulating, how many eggs you're gonna make, and then they'll determine when they need to see you again to make. Um, a sonogram to see how everything is going first they do a blood test to be like okay levels and then okay now we need to see we need to see how many like we need to see what's going on inside and it's pretty much like that until um they tell you until the sonogram where they're like hey you need to take Gana relics because you have a lot of eggs and it's gonna put your body's gonna release one naturally so from then on, you, they take make you take Gana Relics. So Gana Relics is a medication and an injection that has you that holds onto your eggs in your ovaries so they can fully develop and mature, so they can extract them. So your body it basically tells your body hold on to those eggs; they're not ready to go yet. And um, um, we'll just continue that. So I, the way I took it was Monopure and Gana Relics in the morning. Um, go along with my day, go to work, do all that. And then at nighttime, um, around dinner time, I took my Gonalef. So that was three medications a day already. And then once, and then you continue taking blood tests and the sonograms. And this is within like, this is a week already. This is a week and a half of you doing this. Um, then they're like, we need to schedule your egg retrieval because they measure your eggs and I'll have video of them measuring just one side of my ovaries. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, as you go along with this, you know basically what you're looking at in a sonogram. It's crazy. Like the more you know from just watching 
a bit like this, you know? It's insane how much you learn. Um, at the same time, I feel like it's a little sad because you know so much, yet nothing has happened. Whatever. Um, the egg retrieval day. So 36 hours before your egg retrieval, um, they'll have you take Overdrill. But in my case, I had to take a different kind of medication because of my chances of having overstimulated ovaries because I had, my doctor estimated me having about two dozen eggs in my ovaries. That's an estimation. That is not what I had, but there, it was pretty close. Anyway, kind of, kind of close. Um, so yeah, I had to take a different type of um, medication, Overdrill or the, the off like side, like not as strong brand. Um, basically is to tell my, my, my body, like okay, it's time to let go. Let go of all the eggs. And they do that so um, my doctor can go in there and rather than taking it from my actual ovary, which is I feel like a little dangerous, my, my body will release them and they'll just catch up. But again, I'm gonna put a video of what happens during an egg retrieval. So I'm gonna put a video of what IVF is and what they do and a video of them extracting the embryo, the, the eggs. This same day, they have um, my husband go in and give them a specimen sample so they can wash it and then do their whole situation of what the doctor needs to do. Day of embryo transfer. So I had to be there crazy early. Um, my appointment was like at seven o'clock in the morning. I took two days off work because they said that I need time off. So I, I talked to my work and be like, hey, I need to not be here because I'm gonna go through a procedure. Um, and they were like, thanks for letting us know. Hopefully that you don't have to miss more after this. Anyway, um, I checked in an hour before my appointment. I got there super early and I took a Valium an hour before my, appo my appointment. Oh, keep in mind, a week before your egg retrieval, exactly, you have to start taking this medication. You and your husband have to take, or you and your partner or... Um, some people use sperm donors, so they don't really count, but you had to take this um, antibiotic called doxycycline. I don't know what it is for. I was told mainly because it was for, um, so you don't get an infection or something like that after the procedure. Um, um, they take you to the back, they hook you up to an IV, the nurses talk to you, an embryologist talks to you, and then an anesthesiologist talks to you and tells you everything that's going to happen um, and what's going to happen after. Um, probably should mention, and I did mention a little bit, You do they do put you under, they put you to sleep, but i never really been scared of that because I feel like the risk is so low nowadays, maybe, I don't know the statistics, but that's just my my thoughts um once they hook you up and they give you these nice socks that i still wear around the house actually and they have you have you in a little gut gown and a hairnet and everything they walk you to the operating room i guess they want to say operating room but it's a room and it's a big white room with like a ring light on the top of the light of the ceiling I'm kind of machines everywhere. And then um, they have this bed that looks kind of like a massage table and a gynecologist chip table thing all in one. It's weird, it's like shaped of a person. They lay you down and then the anesthesiologist comes in and tells you like, hey, hooking you up and hopefully you're comfortable and everything. Um, and then you wake up and that's it. Pretty much you do a whole bunch of medication just to get out eggs after my embryo transfer my doctor told me that he was able to take out 17 eggs off of out of my body Excuse me. 
Um, I know that's a lot, right? Um, but seven of them were immature, so I technically, after that, had ten mature ones. And they give you like a little paper like this. I wrote on it, but this is basically um, the process of your embryos. And they, as they go, they start rating them from good and fair. Good, good, and fair, fair. They don't have like a number thing that I've seen other people have. Um, that same day, they'll fertilize the eggs and then have them watch them every single day. And then the only time that you ever hear from them through email is um, on days one, the first day, the day after your embryo, um, the third day, fifth and sixth day. And then after the sixth day, they'll let you know how many in total they have frozen. Your doctor will call you and tell you, um, call me when your cycle starts all over again and we'll start the process for the transfer which will be another video because this is already as long as it is to me that's already too long anyway um in the end uh, they were able to fertilize nine embryos and then the third day they tell you that um how many have more than four to eight cells and they tell you which ones are growing really good and which ones are growing kind of okay and um by the fifth day they told me that three of them out of the eight were in blastocysts and they had three maybes that they don't know they were on the fair scale that didn't know if they were going to make it and by the last day i had eight full embryos so i'm pretty fortunate because i've seen other people's videos that say they only end up with one embryo and they basically have to start all over if it doesn't if it doesn't work so yeah it's crazy so that's the end of this video um next time i'll be talking about what to expect when you're doing a frozen embryo transfer because after my egg uh, eight full embryos they did they froze them and then once my body was ready they started me on medication to do a frozen embryo transfer and I'll talk about that more in detail uh, in the next video. I hope you guys like this video. Please like and subscribe. Um, and thank you guys for watching. Bye.